Hi, my name is Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that have maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I've had a car that lasts over 400,000 miles. The current car that I'm driving has over 220,000 miles on it. It's a 95 model. So I hope you can benefit from the information I share. Thanks for tuning in. All right, I got this kit from uh, FCP. Got the new idler roller. It's tight. No slop. No noise, new tensioner roller, it's tight, brand new tensioner. The thing about the hydraulic tensioner is you want to make sure there's no hydraulic leak in there. It's supposed to have a little plastic clip, which the new one didn't have, so I'll take this one off the old one. Supposedly, this little plastic guide that you snap in place once you uh, lock everything in, it's supposed to stop the tensioner which sits like this from getting too much slack in the event that the tensioner fails. When I pull this pin, that tip will come out and put pressure on this nipple of the uh, tensioner there. So if you want to try to reuse the old one, you get a big C clamp and you compress it one turn per minute. And if that thing doesn't leak, you can go ahead and reuse it. So I'll start compressing it. And at the same time, I'll put these other uh, two rollers back in. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be torqued at 18 foot-pounds. Before you put the timing belt on, it's always a good idea to check the length of it. So I would hold the timing belt together and stretch it out, make sure that they seem to be uh, same length. And if you don't have nothing else to do with your time, you could count the teeth on them. If you wrap the old belt around the new belt, it should come up a couple teeth short because you're wrapping it around the new one. Okay, I got about five turns in 30 minutes on this tensioner. It's almost all the way in. In a minute, I'll compress it just a little bit more and uh, stick this pin through there and then look at the tip of it and see if it's leaking. Okay, I got that cranked all the way in. I put the pin in it, and it does look dry. It doesn't have a lot of hydraulic fluid in it. So I'll check it again in 15, 20 minutes. If it's still dry, it's probably good to be used again. Okay, I got the tensioner roller installed. I think you're supposed to torque that uh, T45 to 18 foot-pounds. I don't think there's enough room to get a torque wrench in there, but if you can, that's great. I got the idler roller in. It's got 12 millimeter bolts on it. I torqued them down. I think they're also supposed to be 18 uh, foot pounds. Now I'm going to install a belt starting at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to feed the new belt down and drop it down past the crank. And then I'm going to go down on from the bottom and put that belt in because you got to start from the bottom. And, uh, let me go down there and do that. Okay, I got the belt started. The teeth of the belt are against the uh, harmonic balancer away from the engine. I got uh, the back of the belt against that uh, dampener there. Now I'm going to work the belt up past the mount and between the cover and then uh, flip it so that the teeth are against the crank. Okay, once I work the belt into the cover here and pressed it up a little bit more past this dampener, it kind of flipped itself into the uh, teeth of the crank. So now that the belt's in the bottom, the next thing I'm going to do is go... Uh, around the intake cam up top. So let me go up top and work it around that way. Before you come up top to work the title, uh, timing belt over these other parts, you have to uh, get it all the way in the cover around the crank from down the bottom. Once you do that, you come up here and you pull the belt around the idler and then you get it up around this uh, intake cam. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and set the uh, 
the tensioner, hydraulic tensioner in place and tighten it up, of course, leaving that pin in it so that when I route this belt, it'll be ready to pull that pin. Okay, as you see, I got my tensioner installed and in place. It's got the plastic clip on it. My uh, tensioner roller is loose. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna pull the slack up on this belt as tight as I can like that. Then I'm gonna pull this slack out on the front side, making sure the teeth is set in the crank. Then I'm gonna come up over this roller then I'm going to come up over the intake cam with little or no slack in the belt teeth. Then I'm going to go over the exhaust cam as tight as I can. And I'm going to hold this intake cam still to try to prevent it from moving. Then I'm going to go over the exhaust cam. Then I'm going to go down under the water pump and up over that pulley. So here it goes. Well, while I was routing my timing belt, uh, it, the belt teeth weren't lining up, so I checked the timing, and it looks like this exhaust cam turned clockwise about a tooth and a half. So I'm going to turn it back about a tooth and a half and uh, go ahead and start putting the belt on again. Sometime the compression will make those uh, timing marks move. I got it moved back and heck I might have bumped it loose when I was pulling that top cover off. So I'm going to go ahead and start with putting that belt on again. Okay, I got the crank timed. As you can see the two notches on the cam with the uh, water pump notch. And then I got these two cams timed. One on the cover there went on the cover there. So now that that's timed, I'm going to go ahead and pull the pin out of that tensioner with a screwdriver. When I pull that out, it's going to take the uh, slack out of the belt. So get the screwdriver down in here. I'm going to have to set this off to do that with two hands. Okay, now I got the pin out of the tensioner. So that uh, tensioner should have plungered into that uh, tensioner roller. And my timing marks are still on. So now I'm going to turn the motor over. Tool, uh, two complete revolutions which is probably four revolutions of the crank just to make sure that this timing is still lined up and then I could uh, start the motor after that. Okay, I turned the motor over two full times. I line my timing marks back up there and my timing mark on my crank is still lined up down there. So the next thing I'm going to do is secure this top timing belt cover with the two 10 millimeter bolts and the fuel line bracket. Okay, I got the top cover on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this bracket back on the front of the uh, serpentine belt. Next thing I'm gonna do is put the coolant bottle back. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the, uh, the low level sensor and then snap the coolant bottle into place. Oh, before I put this cover on, I'd like to point out that there is no oil on top of this motor. I recently did the PVC system. A little bit of condensation, but no oil. Uh, last time I took this cover off, before I did the PVC a couple of months ago, the top of this motor was covered with oil. Alright, I got those screws back on the cover. Like I said, don't tighten those down. Just snug them down. They shank out. Okay, now I got the dampener cover in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down those two 10 millimeter bolts. And then I'm going to close up this uh, side panel over here and put that bolt in. Okay, I got the cover on. 
I'm going to go ahead and hook up this air intake for this ECU box. Now I'm going to clear everything out of the motor compartment, all these tools and stuff, and I'm going to fire the motor up and watch to make sure that the timing belt is going to track straight on the rollers and everything. Okay, I got the bracket on and tight. Uh, I just tighten them down real tight. Don't tighten them too tight. You don't want to strip any threads. I think the proper torque might be 18 foot-pounds. I start out by going under the crank. Then I come under the power steering. I'm sorry, not the power steering, but the uh, air conditioner compressor. From there, I take it from the crank around this tensioner. Then I come up and over the power steering. And then I loop it down and hold it by this idler. And then I take it from the air conditioner compressor over the alternator. And then I slide it over the uh, stationary idler there. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the tool in here and take this... Uh, tension off of it and remove that pin and the serpentine belt will be installed okay here comes the start say a quick prayer if you need to hit the starter car fired right up the idle settled in back by a thousand Walk out here and see where this timing belt is tracking. <clears throat> Seems to be tracking right on the edge of those rollers, which is great. You don't want it hanging off the end of anything. So, car is running. Pin is out of that tensioner. We're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on the front of the timing belt and lower the car off the jacks and put the wheel on. Okay, before I put the wheel and stuff on, I just want to point out that you need to remove this old timing belt cover because it no longer applies. It was last done there. I round the miles to the nearest 500. I'm, I'm pretty anal, but not that bad. So I... The car has 169, 677, so I rounded up to 170, and I put the date. I put that I changed the belt, the idler, the tensioner roller, and the hydraulic tensioner. If I would have changed the water pump, I would have wrote that on there as well. So I'm probably going to stick this sticker inside the glove compartment door. I don't know if that sticker will hold up out here in the engine compartment as good as these aluminum ones do from the dealer. So that's what I'm going to do with it, and uh, you guys do what you want. Thanks for watching. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. Go ahead and subscribe to my page so you will get notification of future videos that I post. You can feel free to visit my website, robertspano.com, post questions, and thanks again for watching.